every time I see the countdown, it never gets old. It never gets old. I'm like a little kid who went to Vegas or New York and saw lights for the first time in their entire life. Like, I'm so easy to please, right? But welcome to the Coach's Corner, you guys. We have the lovely Coach Hadassah, and we have our special guest today, Coach Tony Marit, Coach T, our morning motivation queen. I am your co-host, Coach Cotton. You guys, I'm super excited about today, y'all. We got Coach Tony here. Tony! Hey, what's <laughs> up? I was like, when do I get a talk? Do I get to say something soon? You get to talk now. Me? Okay. Right now, you get to talk right now. <laughs> I, my uh, my people gave your people the list of questions I will not answer. <laughs> but you got you got a list of questions. Our producer said that everything <laughs> is on the table. <laughs> everything is everything is on the table. Okay. Listen. What it's do you want? Not. <laughs> but it's not though. That is so hilarious. I have a list of questions that I don't have to answer. Whatever is on the table, let's let's just let's put it all out there. Let's put it out there. It's all good stuff, though. It's amazing stuff. Because here's the deal. Um, I don't know why I'm here, except for to say hey. But y'all got to tell me why am I here? Tell me what's going on. What do you want to hear? Yes. What do you want to know? Because I have all the secrets. I know we stuff. We want all of that. I know stuff. Watch we your feed. All so of that. Somebody's gonna cut the feed and be like, "No." Okay. Okay. <laughs> look, because I, I see. Um, look, Coach Cotton is over there. Work. You know, work. She working the chats. <laughs> That's what Tagging you know. the friend, telling the friend. Oh, yeah. So if y'all see my head down. <laughs> right. She she's working the chats and all that good stuff. And so, listen, Woo. I do not have a list of questions or anything like that at all, because here's the thing. To me, your story is amazing every time I hear it, right? <laughs> You're amazing. First of all, this is, of course, we have our awesome fearless leader, Tony yeah. Mark, Morning Motivation, you know, Extreme FX Global Expansion Leader. She's awesome. And she has an yes. amazing story. And so sure. me, I'm just like, tell your story. Just tell us everything. Just put it out there, like whatever you want us to know, because whatever it is, she, she's just going to spill the beans anyway. So look, I'm just like, <laughs> spill the beans. Spill the beans. Y'all to tell me how spill amazing the beans. So I want to start off with, I was born by the river. <laughs> That's all I know in that part. In a little <laughs> house. <laughs> in a crossfire. All I know is that I love that song and that's all I know of it. So here's the deal. I don't know where to start. Let's say. So I was in the army for eight years. It was amazing. Um, it taught me a bunch of stuff, y'all. Did you know? And let me just start off with this. Did you know, and I know if I talk to you guys, but do you know there's something called total muscle failure? Mm -mm. So I listen, didn't know about that. I'll be I, run, I, I was running and y'all, I cried every day. Every day I was crying. I just kept calling my mom saying, listen, I made a mistake. She's like, too bad. I mean, like you signed a contract. And so I'm running, doing my thing. And I'd be like, I can't do it anymore. I can't do it anymore. And they, you know, drill sergeant, yes, you can. And I'm like, no, I can't. Like, I feel like I'm going to fall out. I feel like I'm going to die. It hurts. And they're like, you feel like that, but are you still going? Yes. So I would keep on going and keep yeah, on going. Fine. But it was it was tough. And I'm like, I can't do this. And it was just yelling and yelling and pushing and pushing. And I just kept thinking, like, there's got to be this point where my body's going to shut down. And it just didn't happen. And then one day, and this is throughout, you know, the first part of basic training is hard. We, you know, we were marched with 30 pounds on our backs, you know, 10 miles, our, our weapons and everything. And it was snow. Y'all know I hadn't seen snow before. I'm from Texas. So I was trying to figure out, you know, if I could do things. And that time I had been up for 24 hours. I was marching. I had, hadn't eaten much. We were running up hills. It was just hard. And I remember we were running and I kept saying, I can't do it. I can't do it. And the drill sergeant's like, yes, you can. And I just fell out. I couldn't control, like mm. there was, no, I couldn't do anything else. 
Because before when I was tired, it was like, I'm tired. I can't do this. It hurts. I don't feel good. And, but I could still keep going. I just didn't like it. Mm -hmm. And so when total muscle failure happened, it showed me that there, every single time that I said I couldn't do it or I didn't like it or it was too hard, I could still keep going. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so it made it, it made it easier after the total muscle failure to go back and look at, you know what? Things get hard and they get rough, but I know that I can keep on going. Like I know that I have more in me. So when hard things would come along, I knew that I had more in me and I would just pull it in and keep going because it's total muscle failure is a physical thing, but it's a mental thing. And that's kind of what the military does is they break you down to nothing. Yes. And then everyone builds back wow. up together. And it is truly, it changed my, because my mindset was already kind of in a place where I have to be positive. But I had, I didn't have the determination and that drive to put with it. Because you can be positive and have a good mindset and do great things all day. But if you don't have that determination and the motivation to do it. Right. Then if you can't put right. it into action, it doesn't mean anything. So that kind of got me into that space. And then I got out because um, it was 9-11 when I was in. And um, I had a four year, a four month old son. I chose not to reenlist because it was just me and him. But um, then we got, I got married, had another baby. I was a stay at home mom. <laughs> it was so nice. I was living in a great Ooh, house. Stay mom. Kitchen. It was like, you know, fairy tale life. And then it wasn't. Look, I'm like, was it? <laughs> no. And then it wasn't. <laughs> I was all comfy, you know, just living my life and not really, you know, pushing myself and just, you know, be, I'm not saying being a mom, but pushing yourself. Cause I had two little babies that were making me want to like, y'all know it. You're in the closet and you're just sitting there rocking being like, please, Jesus. Y'all, <laughs> <Yeah, right. laughs> when my youngest learned how to put a sausage pancake stick in the microwave and cook it himself, I, cannot right now. <laughs> I almost had a party. It was like, so anyway but it wasn't so there i sat and i was like look <laughs> here's my choice right i can um you know i love my mom to death but she worked a bazillion jobs right so i can right. work a regular job and i can be a bartender and i could work at a I, mean, I could work like two or three different jobs just to survive because y'all know how it works Mm -hmm. If you're, you could work all you want, but if you're a single mom or just a single person, but a single mom, you are stuck in this rut. If you make too much money, you can't get any kind of help. Yep. And once you make, you know, twelve, thirteen dollars an hour, you you can't mm -hmm. afford daycare. You can't Look, afford I one mean, penny over one mm -hmm. cent. Like one penny is gonna make a difference. It's it's completely crazy, and so you're yeah. stuck. You're like, do I stay? in this lifestyle where I'm not making any money, but everything's, everything's taken care of. Am I okay with that? And of course I'm like, no, you know, I can't do this. I have to move someplace different in my life for my kids. I can't, I refuse to do this. So I looked and looked and finally I found there was a program that would pay for me to get into college if I did a certain degree. And I'm like, whatever, I'm just gonna do it. So I'm going to college. I was gonna be a nurse. They're paying me to be a nurse. And um, I hated it y'all. I showed up to my first biology test and I'm sitting there and it's like a bunch of numbers and why not? I don't do numbers. It's a bunch of numbers and I'm sitting there and I was crying so hard in this test that I had like a sweater and I was blowing snot into my sweater. Cause I'm just like, Oh my up. Lord. And the teacher's just looking at me and I'm like, listen, I haven't been in school in like 20 years. Um, I don't know what this 0 0.01 times three, a seven is, but um, I can't do this anymore. Can't do it. Um, and I was like, there's gotta be something else. If I wanted to pursue what I wanted to do in college, I had a choice. I had to work even harder and I had to get loans and I had to get scholarships, but I did. So I went through the college process. Y'all, it took me seven years, $70,000, but I got a graduate degree. I worked at, I picked up trash. I worked at a bakery. I handed out free food at Sam's. Y'all know those people? Right. Those people. Yeah. I worked at T-Mobile. I did inventory things, y'all. Y'all, you name it, I did it. I was working all kinds of jobs, right? Got my degree. I was super excited. Everything's great. 
And then as I move into the corporate world, although I was doing something that I loved, it was different because now it was, you know, before I had a schedule, it was organized, but now I like, I had to get up for work every morning and go to this place where I was doing what I liked, but oh my gosh, y'all know how it is. Mm -hmm. Go take your break and you can take your lunch and all this. And then you know how it is on salary. You're doing all your stuff. And I'm just like, man, is this it? Like, is this why I worked so hard and went through this whole thing so I can sit here, have to wake up an hour and a half before everybody else to get dressed? Y'all know you got to fix your hair. You got to put on your makeup, which is why I don't do it now. Look at that. Um, I know. Beautiful. Because Beautiful I get up so early and, and get ready and just start my day. And it was just every day I felt like I was just running in this wheel, just going in a circle. And I'm thinking... I'm making money, right? I was making good money, but what am I going to do when I get older? How am I going to do that? And so I start thinking, right? You, know, you we, y'all have how many of y'all had those dreams, right? Where I'm going to win the lottery, I'm going to pay off these bills, I'm going to give my mom a house, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to do all this stuff. Exactly. And you have all these dreams, but you're like, maybe I need to play the lottery too. Because I, <laughs> <Right. like, laughs> I don't even like playing a lottery, but no, every because I'm like, it's 10 or $20. Yeah. And I, I mean, you think you're going to be that one person that buys that one ticket at the 7 Eleven and BFE and you won. Right. Um, nobody else did. Mm-hmm. But I just didn't buy the tickets. So I was just sitting there and I just, I just didn't, I was in this haze. I didn't feel like I was contributing anything. I liked what I did, but I didn't feel a purpose. I had no purpose. And I just felt wow. like, is this it? I mean, I love my kids. I love my husband, but is this really it? Is this like the end of it? And then somebody comes along and says, Hey, I got a video for you to watch. And I'm like, I don't have time for that. <laughs> <laughs> and I got about my day. And one day I had had a hard day and I was washing dishes like 11 o'clock at night and I was thinking about this dang video. And so I called and I was like, listen, what's this video? Like you keep talking about this. What, you keep asking me and you won't give me the dang video. So can I just have the video now? Because now I want to know what the dang video is. <laughs> you won't send it to me until I tell you I can watch it so I can watch the dang video. Sorry, I can watch the video. <laughs> So it was Gino. Y'all know that. So Gino, yeah. he sent the video. he's like, listen, I'm going to send you this video. Yeah. Y'all know how he talks, right? Yo, yo, yo <laughs> video. And like, you're going to watch it. I'm going to send you this video, okay? <laughs> Gino, I'm going to back. I'm going to call you in 10 minutes. I'm like, whatever. So I turn on this video <laughs> and I'm watching it and I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> what is Forex? Doesn't he know that, y'all, I was valedictorian. Let me just back up. When oh, I graduated, I'm bachelor, and I have to say this, when I graduated, I was, I don't know, 30-something, but I was in a group of 1,800 students from Northeastern College with a 12% acceptance rate, thank you, which yes. Northeastern College, 1,800 other students, and I got a call. They said, listen, are you coming to the graduation in Boston? I said, I, I want to go. I want to celebrate walking across the stage. I worked hard for this bachelor's degree. And they said, good, because you're the valedictorian. I was like, valedictorian, y'all. <laughs> 1,500 kids. <laughs> and I was the only one with a 4.0. Where is that video? Where's the video? <laughs> I want to show them that video. That video was a bomb, though. Okay. So listen. <laughs> Just remind us before this is over, we showing that video because you all have to see. Miss you know Connie I gotta look for it. I gotta that, that video, that video. speech. Okay. Look for that video and send it um, to me because we gonna share it. I'm okay. about to. I don't even know if I've uploaded anywhere, but I'll. Find that speech delivered me when I heard it. I was like, "Oh, hallelujah!" <laughs> <laughs> keep going, keep going. <laughs> because this is good. But, but yeah, I had. Heard it was just crazy. So I'm listening to this thing out Forex and I'm like, listen, I, I know a lot of stuff. I'm pretty smart. Right. Like we it's went like over she's this. Right. I, I had a I got a business degree, a master's yes. degree. It costs yes. lots of money. So it means I know everything. Right. Yes. I paid way too much not to know something. And so I'm just looking at it thinking, what? 
And then it gets into the sales. I'm like, oh, hell no. I am not selling nothing. I right. will. And I sat through like this. Oh. I was, like, <laughs> I was waiting. You know, we ain't buying nothing. We ain't selling nothing. And we oh, ain't yeah, rolling like, nobody. I know he is not trying to ask me for money right now. For real. Yes. I thought we were friends. He's going to ask me for money. Come on. For oh, so my goodness. Time. So I'm waiting for him to come back. And he calls me back. And I was like, listen, I'm not buying nothing. I don't know what this is. Right. I never heard of it. I'm not going to buy anything. And I'm not selling something. I was really, because y'all know when someone comes out, you're selling something. You're like, yeah. Uh -uh. This you talking to, I thought it was important information. And actually, it isn't. You're just trying to sell me something. So I was all mad. So anyways, point is, y'all. Um, He's just, he shuts me down pretty quick. He's like, listen, I need to get you on the phone. My business partner. I'm like, yeah, your business partner. <laughs> he's like, yes, okay. yes, because I'm going to ask your questions. I'm like, okay, let me talk to your business partner. You're getting on the phone at midnight. Okay. That is so hilarious. So he gets this guy named Jacob on the phone. And he's telling me all this stuff that Jacob's done and how amazing he is and how he supposedly has made this much money and how supposedly he works at a bank or did or something. I don't know. All I know is that he's telling me about how great this guy is. And all I kept hearing in my head is, they want me to sell something. And I'm not right. Right. So anyways, <laughs> Jacob starts talking. Gino's done. He ain't talking no more. Jacob's telling me, listen, blah, 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 blah. Y'all know how. If I, I'm not you. <laughs> But if right. I was, but I'm not, but if I was, and I'm just sitting there and I'm not hearing half of what he's saying. Yeah. And then something somewhere on the way, he tells me how much money he made. I'm like, you made how much and how much? And he's, and I, I was like, so I did see that part, but I mean, I don't, I don't know like 10,000 people. I can't be bringing you to right. doing that. I'm not selling something. And he's like, listen, <laughs> you only need X, Y, and Z, and da, 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 da. And I'm like, okay, I know some people. Let me let me just see. Because at this point, I'm right, like, let, let me just try it out. <laughs> let me see. So he's going on and on. I said, listen, here's the deal. I'm busy. I've got a job that's very important because I, I spent lots of money for my degree. So I know a lot of stuff. And so my job is super important. I make lots of money. That's all there is to it. Um, second of all, uh, I have kids. I have a husband. I have a cat. I've got books I read. I've got Netflix shows. I've got reality shows. I got all kinds of stuff I'm doing. And I got these farms of, and stuff that I'm growing on my iPad. I got people depending on me. Right. My life is important. I've got fish tanks over there on my iPad. I have farms. I have entire cities I'm running. I people depend on me. <laughs> my life is important. So the point is, oh my God. I'm going to give you 60 days. If this stuff doesn't pan out, I'm not doing it. And so anyways, y'all know. 30 days later, I retired, 42 years old. Whoop, whoop, and it was whoop. amazing. But here's the thing is in that space, I I met, I found out that, you know, Forex obviously is a real thing. Um, right. I found out that network marketing is not sales really. Um, and I found out that all of that work I had done at that point, you know, I had always felt like I couldn't take this. I couldn't take that. I couldn't do that. But I could. My whole life had not reached a total muscle failure. Like I could keep on going. Right. And so when this came, it was like this rubber band. And I was like, oh, my gosh, because before I could only stretch my rubber band so much, I could only make what my job would allow me to make. Yeah. And then I have to search and look for something else or maybe move or whatever. But now it was like the rubber band was gone. And all I mm -hmm. had to do was walk along and just pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. I'm like, this, wow. is, too, this is too easy. So it completely changed my life. But in that process, I realized that it became very clear that I didn't have to have these, I'm going to win the lottery conversations anymore. Mm-hmm. I mean, we know, we know there's people out there, some of, <laughs> Sherry, I mean, we're talking millions of dollars. So I made it a point that I was going to be the first millionaire in my family, end of story. That's all there is to it. And I was going to show my kids a different way, different right. 
way to do things because there's always there's always more to do. If I can wake up in the morning and I can look at y'all's faces or see people on morning motivation, there is there's something I can do. There's some way I can affect change in my life and someone else's life. Right. But when I when I talk about forex to people, I think about the people y'all know that are making four figures this morning. How many people made four figures this morning? Right? A lot. A lot of people. Look at it. I was like, here's the deal. Yes. 100 bucks and you can come make four figures a day, five figures a day, even three figures a day. That's what six figure earners make. And yeah. it's 100 bucks. So you can, we can allow you to come make this money and then learn to make it on your own. So now you go mm -hmm. back to what are those conversations? Do you want to build a compound for your family and buy your mama house and everything else? Guess what you could do? Mm -hmm. You could do it now. You don't have to win the dang lottery. Come yes. on. Right. Yep. I mean, there's, there's no gamble anymore. The gambling is taken away. Right. Now it's just concrete facts and evidence and you learn the it skill. It. it is. That is it. And so mm -hmm. I was just like, this is, it chokes me up sometimes. I start thinking about like just imagine because you know we have all these issues right we've got all these platforms and y'all know i'm a brown lady i'm i'm, yes. I'm Texas, spanish but i live in south texas so i thought i've been mexican my whole life that's okay but for so long i cannot I, deal with it right? you know, it is i'm brown my dna test said i'm, I'm you spanish got me, you got me crying tony i'm mayan i am mayan the point is, is, I live in South Texas, so look, I'm, I'm cousin. Mexico, that's what everybody says. Cousin, I thought you said Compton. Tom, like, told I'm you your though. cousin. Compton, is, she's our cousin. I know. I was told to right? though. We like, uh, we you cousin. Texas? <laughs> you said like, I'm lying. I'm like, this is my cousin. I know, right? <laughs> There was yes. so much that people, and y'all know, and I don't even know the extent of it, but I mean, it was just, I couldn't do so much because I didn't get the chance. Mm -hmm, I didn't right. get the chance. And I would get so irritated because I'd be like, I can do this job. I know I can do it. I know I'm good. I know I'm better, but I wasn't what they wanted. I was a right. girl. I was brown. Um, I was, I had kids. Y'all know how it is professional. You have yeah. kids strike off. You know, you got to go hide your Facebook page. They know you have kids. I mean, there's so many strikes. I'm like, this isn't, I was just getting tired of thinking this isn't fair. I've got to do something else. And now here's the deal. If I don't become a millionaire within the next six months, whose fault is that? Right. Right. That's all there is to Accountability. it. Accountability. Yes. Exactly. And that's what I think is scariest to people. Because if you go and you collect a job, a paycheck, and it's there every week, and you can just depend on right. that, you never know what your total muscle failure moment is. You never know what right. you're going through. And so it is just, it's a struggle. I mean, y'all know I have my pity party days. Some of those days after my house burned down. Jesus, I was so that's a whole testimony right there. That, was, that right there. That's the part where I'm like, okay. <laughs> Right, like, we, like, like, like. Next part is how right. Things burned out from that. <laughs> like to prayer got answered. Sixty days, prayers answered to <laughs> house burned down. Mm -hmm. to, you gotta be specific with your prayers, right? So, that part, that part, yes. right there. <laughs> My grandma used to say, "Listen." Um, I used to always pray to Jesus that I would lose weight. I wanted to lose weight, and then he gave me cancer. He's like, I should have, she said, I should have been more specific and I should have learned from her to be Bad. more specific with my intentions because y'all, I lived in that house when I'm, when I was a single mom, moved to this tiny 1200 square, square foot trailer house. It was 10 years old. I hated it. My kids were not three and five anymore. They were 14 and 17 years old and there was no room for us. I hated living there. Stuff was falling apart. It's a dang trailer house. And I'm like thinking I am making more money than I've ever made in my entire life. And I'm living in the biggest piece of crap, hunk of trunk. I cannot stand it. But I was paying off vehicles. I was paying off credit cards. But I'm like, man, I just, and I kept saying, I will be in a new, because I kept saying, I can't live here. Like it was killing my soul. I hated the neighborhood. I hated where I lived. It didn't match who I was. 
Okay, and so wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. So you were in a corporate job making six figures, living in a trailer park, barely making yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we're going to private school. Yeah, my kids are going to private school. Um, I mean, we had all this debt from when I wasn't because y'all, those student loans are like $900 a month. Yeah. That's exactly. a whole mortgage payment. Plus mm -hmm. my utilities yeah. and everything else. Plus, I mean, you add all that in and you're right back to where you started. And I'm just like, wow. So then when I got to a place where I could kind of determine what I was making and I'm paying off stuff and I'm doing things, I was like, I can't do this. It was really killing me to be there because I felt like, you know, I'm talking, having my calls, I made six figures in 30 days or 60 days and retired or six figures in 21 right. days and I retired. And here I sit in this truck, I could not stand it. And so I kept saying, listen, uh, I'm going to find a way. Like I was going to have to find a buyer for my house. I was going to have to visit a trailer house, y'all. Something. And I said, March 1st, 2021 or earlier, I will be out of this house. I said, I will be yeah. out of this house. <laughs> February 17th, it burned down. So <laughs> I'm saying Ooh. you got to be very specific with what your intentions are because you will get them Absolutely. if you want But now, look, I got to show y'all because the sun. Look at this. I got my neighbors out there. They're doing their little golf thing. Look at that. Beautiful timing. Yeah. Trailer park Beautiful. to floor to hole 14 right there. Um, and that's the thing is that it's like winning the lottery. Yeah. I mean, it is. You sit and you dream about all these things. When I was watching those reality shows and reading all these different books about lives that people have that I wish I had. And I was and I looked on Instagram and I'm like, man. I wish I could do that. And I just didn't, I didn't know how to get to that point. I'm like, how are these people doing this? You know, right. I don't have anybody to pitch or I don't know anybody like that. And my job, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to make any more. I'm 40 something years old. And you know, mm -hmm. at a certain age, you're not. So anyway, um, now my life is a lottery. <laughs> I won the lottery. But <laughs> Every I gambled on myself. I'm like, listen, um, are you going to take this hundred bucks and change your life? And mm -hmm. how many people did not listen? There's people still now that just laugh at me. I mean, they don't. And you know what? Who's laughing now? But I met, right. guys, I met this amazing family. I just found out there's a bunch of comments over here. I didn't even see. <laughs> <laughs> you had to look the comments, Tony. But there we try so to many. post them sometimes, but we get so caught up in the, the interview that All right. we yes. <laughs> sorry, y'all. We we're gonna try to post some comments, uh, right. but we just yeah, we, it's yeah. fantastic. But it's just y'all. I I do. I have my days when I was I was living in that hotel. I was running my office out of my truck. I had an inverter. I remember going to plug it in. My computer, my internet wouldn't work unless my inverter was plugged in and my truck was running. Mm -hmm. And I was just like at this point where I, you know, I can get through, I can take stuff, but I had this moment of like, I can't, like, I'm done. Like, I cannot do this. Like, I cannot take one more thing you're going to give me. Please stop. Like, please, I cannot take one more thing. because It's like one after the right. other, after the other. And I'm just like, I don't know what to like ask for. <laughs> like, I'm so lost. I just need you to give me a moment and just stop. And I, I don't remember, I think it was Amber Lee, I maybe it called or somebody. And I'm like, I just, I need a moment. Like, give me 30 seconds to cry my big girl tears and be like, I just right. stop. And then you got to get over it. Because what am I, I mean, what good does it do? You got to suck it up, buttercup. Right. Yes. I mean, it, I do. I have my crying moments. I, I get angry. I get hangry. <clears throat> I saw JV a while ago. Listen, JV and Amber Lee, they know. They know that I have my moments. But everybody's going to have your moments. You got to just keep on keeping on. And that's kind of what I kind of live my life now is that I know mentally and physically where my mm -hmm. limit is. And I know that even though if I reach that limit, the worst that's going to happen is that I just have to get back up and do it again. I just have Start over. so many times. And it's just what... Who's going to stop me? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Nobody but you. That would be fun. Right. <laughs> I, and I love that shirt. It says under, what, what does it say? 
What does it say, Tony? Underestimate me. That'll be fun. Yes. Underestimate me. That'll be fun. And so, listen, and I want, I, I want to say this for people who, um, look, for those of you who are, are, are new, you know, you may be new to this opportunity. You may have just hopped on the live and don't know about anything that we're talking about. Okay. <laughs> right. And so I want to bring you up to speed where, <laughs> yes. you know, Tony um, went from, you know, job to job and she was in the army and, and total muscle failure and all that kind of stuff. And then next thing you know, she was a stay at home mom. And then next thing you know, she wasn't anymore in the single mom and trailer park and um, you know, but look, valedictorian, graduated college, all of that type of stuff, master's degree, everything, working corporate America, six figures in a trailer park with two ch two children, right? <laughs> Lots. The summation is wonderful. <laughs> look, with with a whole bunch of kids, but two. <laughs> <laughs> with little tiny babies going on, and then took took a chance. Like when people take chances on the lottery, right? Took a chance with an opportunity because that's what the word opportunity means. It means chance, take right? Chance. Yeah. She took a chance on an opportunity and she said, look, I'm going to give this 30 days, 60 days or whatever. And if it doesn't work, then, <laughs> hey, whatever. I tried it, right? You know, thing. I tried. Being a person who had never... Like she didn't have any prior experience with this industry. And mm -hmm. she went, she, she was making five, what? Five figures a month, 10,000, was it 10,000? $10,000 yeah. a month or something? 10,000 a month. 10,000 wow. a month in 60 days. So she retired herself, okay? And then, and then, <laughs> Her trailer park burned down. <laughs> it burned down because she said, I'm going to be out of here. And it was like, yep, you're going to be out of here. Burnt down. And so if you all remember, because I remember I have family that lives in Houston. And it was Ooh. during that, that, that storm thing where <laughs> they were going alternating between water and lights and water and lights. And in that, mm. her trailer park burnt down. <laughs> it was like, like we're all like, whoa! Wait, Everything. You know, no water, like, no lights, no home. The, you know, <laughs> all of that. I remember the whole thing. I was checking on like blood family and extreme <laughs> family at the same time. Absolutely, absolutely. We were sending care right. packages. I think we was trying to do philanthropy work for the family. Right. <laughs> she was like, what y'all need? What y'all need? And you was like, oh, I need a house. Michelle, I need a house. That's what I need. Right. And Tony's like, I need a, I need a house. whole house. And, and so what I'm thinking about, and 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 so now she, she has to go through the insurance and all of that type of stuff. And she's in her truck running her business yes. from her truck with the dedication. Team. Okay. And I'm on her team, so I know for a fact. I was like, Right, Tony. And every, and look, and I'm not even on Tony's team, but I felt like I was on the team. <laughs> I'm like, she's like, I'm in a truck. I got my laptop. I got my phone. Right. I got but the Jennifer. I'm like, just came don't together. Don't blow up your car. Don't and, blow up the car. And what needed to be done. More than motivation that Tony started was still running. Right. I mean, like everything was still running and Tony was still running her business from her truck. But here's the thing about it. And this is what I look at all the time when I even think about it. Had she not took that chance. Right. Wow. Wow. She wouldn't even have had the money in order to do the things that she did. And then right. the support of the team that she built and just the common unity period I right lost I lost my job she would have lost her job yeah. and they so were I mean, it's just like oh well so, you know i guess we need to replace her because her house burnt down and she can't come to work huh that's right? totally out of your control and so right that opportunity afforded her to be able to take that blow but still you know, continue to move on and now 
Oh my gosh, I can't wait to visit Tony's house. She is like I sure her backyard can't wait. is the golf course. <laughs> right? Her backyard Look, is the golf course. <laughs> let me tell you why I'm excited to visit Tony's house. Because that dog gone curing <laughs> machine that's hooked up to the refrigerator cooler system. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Listen. I'm like, Tony, show me what a machine is. <laughs> when I get there, like, hey, y'all, hey, Kenny, hey, everybody. What that coffee machine at? Let's hook up machine? to the refrigerator where's system. The That's all we need to know is where the, where's the coffee machine? <laughs> where that? Point me to that direction. It's just, it, it just amazes me, though, because, uh, again, that opportunity allowed and afforded her to be able to, to do that. And, you know, those are the things that and I love when you say this all the time, like nobody's coming to save you. Save yourself. <laughs> no one is coming to save you. No one is coming to <laughs> Tony, Tony took there the no opportunity. Lifeboat. <laughs> right? There's no lifeboat. But Tony took the opportunity before she really needed mm -hmm. it. Okay. I mean, although she needed right. it, we didn't know how much she would really need it until it happened. Y'all, if that had happened and I didn't have this, I would have lost my job. Like, we know I would have lost yeah. my job. Um, and I just sent y'all the YouTube link of that video. But oh. it's got the whole collage or whatever. But here's the thing. I would have lost my job. End of right. story. You know that. There was no turning back from that. Um, because I had to take off too much time. My husband was working. You know, I, my kids, they had to go stay. I didn't get to have my kids in the same house as me for months and months. Um, it was just, it was, wow. there was no place to go at first. And then, you know, to rebuy everything. Cause here's the thing, let's say, you know, insurance, there was this, oh, insurance has, has you. Yeah. But you know what the thing is, is that it's not just the insurance. It's like when people come over, they're like, oh, Hey, do you got some tape? Oh, I don't have paper. Go grab a pen and paper. I don't have a pen and paper. Every single thing that you have in your house, you gotta like rebuy. Like, right, oh, I don't right. have that. I don't have a pizza cutter. We we made pizza the other day and we're just sitting here like <laughs> it's gone. Yeah, right. it's it's gone. Stuff you don't even think about. Yeah. Think and about right. Is, you don't the thing that people don't understand is that there was so yes, the insurance helped, but um everything else, I wouldn't have a couch, a table, appliances. I mean, just every people do not realize that all that insurance money is gone like that it's wow. like that right and, and insurance doesn't give you credit to buy a house see mm. that's all there is to it but a big down payment and your bills paid off with a bad credit score helps a lot that would have been there. wow been that, living again, tell me. right you can i mean my credit is not good but I had paid off my bills because my my forex and this opportunity allowed me to do that, and I had room for a big down payment. You can get mm. a house. That's but awesome. had that not happened, I wouldn't have had money for down payment because I was living paycheck paycheck basically. I wouldn't have money for down payment. I wouldn't have my bills paid off. So where would I be with a bad credit score and no down payment and huge debt to income ratio in an apartment? Maybe right. maybe oh, live my mom. I don't know. I don't even know. I mean, think about it. And so now I was telling you that I feel like sometimes when I'm in this house, because it's amazing that I'm in somebody's house. Like I'm wow. staying at my friend's house that's got a really nice, it still sometimes doesn't feel like it's my house. Because I have never, y'all, I love my house. And I'm just like, oh, that's never. amazing. House this nice. And to just, I sit back sometimes and I'm just sitting here thinking I am on my porch doing what I want every day. Exactly. And I don't, I don't have to do anything. And it's just, it is. Yes. Forex is life changing. I saw the comments. It is. And I saw, oh, I <laughs> yes. Yo, my life <laughs> so changed and just think about, I mean, and that's why I like to work and I have a, I have such a soft spot for young single moms because man, rewind a little bit with all that hustle if someone mm -hmm. me, if someone had just told me before i spent seventy thousand dollars in all those years that i could have done this in a year i mean y'all think about it if i did right. this years ago where would i be right now oh ooh. 
But you know what, though? The thing about that is what I still love about the, the lesson of it and the growth is you had to go through all that because now your message is literally saving someone else. A, another single mother who's like, who may can't even get student loans or pay for college or, you know, just looking for a way out, looking for an alternative. And here you went through that before them already. And now you can get on here on this podcast and say, I did it. I wish I had known about this earlier or sooner, but I went through it. And now I can tell you about Forex today. So you don't have to go and spend the 70 right. grand to get a degree. You can actually still go to college and you can pay for out of pocket okay, without you can pay debt, for it, right? That's what you well, that's do. the thing is I, I, have love been that. Poor. I have been poor where I did not have a hundred dollars, but I'm telling you, had you told me that you were going to give me a million dollars if I bought this hundred dollar blanket or something, I would have found a hundred dollars. I would right. have found exactly. it. I would have dug it up. I would have found it. I would have saved. I wouldn't have eaten. I mean, I right. would have found it. And that's where we all come to. And it's everybody at a certain point yes. where you are. I don't care if you're making six figures or, or you're you're homeless or wherever you're at. At a certain point, you have to make a decision. Do you want more? Yes, yes or no. If it's yes, are you going to do what it takes to get that? Yes or no? And yes, absolutely. are you willing to let go of all the excuses? Because when That's someone tells right. me, well, I couldn't do it because of this. I'm like, you couldn't do it because of you. That's mm -hmm. it. We all have things happen and it's going to stop you. But you've got to find you've got to work the problem. Is that show, you know, that show seal team like work the problem. You have to work yeah. the problem. Because if you don't, it's just a problem. Everybody's got them. Who doesn't have a problem? Do you have problems, Coach Cotton? You know I got problems. I call you about my problems. You know I got problems. <laughs> you know what one of your problems isn't anymore? Is now you know what a Frito pie is and how amazing it is. You so, better preach. And it was so good. I was like, y'all look so I told her all about <laughs> Look, Tony, Coach T is not just a leader with extreme, not just a friend. She's a <laughs> recipe, a uh, split second, feed you person. <laughs> Tony don't coach me through ramen. I told you I made the fried ramen. Or did I not tell you? I made the, fried, made ramen. the fried ramen. It was amazing. And I was it? like, where have I been? I'm sheltered. <laughs> It was so good, right? I'm like, no one ever told me about fried ramen and I love ramen. And then the Frito pie, I was like, I told my brother, I'm like, y'all go buy me some Fritos. I'm about to try a Frito pie. And we all like, what? Even my brother's like, Frito pie. I'm like, don't worry about it. Tony told me how to do it already. I got that. Me, me comes in the house with two big bags of Fritos, right? And so I'm like, okay. Because the recipe is so simple. Even a caveman can do this, right? You can be five years old and do this recipe. So I, I get the chili. I get my little ground beef. I make fry, do it in the pan. I get the cheese sauce. I, jalapenos. I'm a spice queen. Y'all know I love spice. I'm like, yeah. jalapenos. I cut that bag down the middle. I'm like, okay, is this looking right? You know, I, had to, <laughs> I had to ask myself. I'm like, I was going back to the pictures. I'm like, yeah, this look right. I pour my meat and chili mixture over there. Put my cream sauce on my cheese sauce on top, my jalapenos. I felt like I was eating with kings and queens. I was like, I can do this. It was so good. I take some pictures. I'm like, I made Frito Pie. It was gone. And that was cool. It's like a meal that sticks to your ribs. Now, I don't know how many calories <laughs> I into. <laughs> it was so delicious, right? <laughs> Y'all look. I'm a fan of so if this is poor, wait, poor people wait, eating wait. like so like, this is a poor man feel. And then Mama Linda, Mama Linda, she like, have you had eggs and Fritos? I'm like, what? Migas, what I mean, right? right? migas, migas. Yes, y'all. Don't I'm even know. Like, Mama Linda. Yeah. I'm just saying, Love take the Fritos. Save and my life. Them. Change your life. Here's the deal. Facts. When you are poor and you got to figure it out, listen. You figure it out. You figure it out. <laughs> you figure it out. <laughs> I right. discovered that I, you're done. When I thought you're I was poor, I wasn't poor, y'all. I discovered that. Right? I'm telling you, when you're done eating ramen the same way, you will find a different way to make it. Yeah. Listen. What you have ramen. So cool. Listen. 
you you find a whole bunch of ways to do the same thing. <laughs> Tony told me how to cook ramen. A lot of ways. Three hundred different ways. I promise you, in like thirty seconds. And I was yeah. like, "What?" She like frown. Have you ever put them in the steamer? And then I'm like, "What? What are you talking about?" Like it was yeah, overwhelming. Texas now. <laughs> I'm telling you. There is, y'all don't even know, y'all don't even know, there is, so let me tell y'all a little crack. So listen, we've all been there, right? We're hungry. Here's the deal. If you go to McDonald's or Burger King or any place like that at the end of the shift and just say, listen, what are you going to throw away? They will give you mm. that sometimes. I'm telling you, wow. the one time I went in, I was starving, y'all. This is before I had kids, but I was starving. I needed something. I go in and I'm like, listen, um, can I get a sample of your chicken strip? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you got, or you go into wow. Sam's, you the street food. But here's the thing is there is always a way. And that's the thing is, do you want to keep, do you want to look for it? Right. Because really, there is financial freedom out there available for anyone, any country, any age, any background, Absolutely. Anything. We don't care what you did yesterday or 10 years ago because the, the charts don't care what you did. Exactly. They don't they just care what you know and what you can take. And that's it. That is it. And it's the most amazing thing. It is truly the great equalizer because yes. Yes. what opportunity you've got someone over here that will never have the opportunity, you know, even if they go to college, but Think about all the things you can go to college all you want, but are you going to be the person that can get that job? Right. With the, with your last name, with the color of your skin, with the way you talk, all right. the different barriers that people have anyway. Right. So, Forex doesn't care. Mm -hmm. It doesn't care. Right. Green and it red does not care. matters. Right. Hello. We That's take X cons and make them icons over here. Like it does not matter if you are a six figure earner on your day to day, your nine to five. You can come over here and do it in the market. That's an eight trillion dollar market. Why not? I'm just saying. Why not? Like $8 trillion dollars. You'd be you really crazy not to try it. Cares if you're making a million dollars out of it, and not even a million dollars a At year. It's eight trillion a day. Nobody. There's a so day. much out there, and then we've got you know these people that are just struggling and and it's just thinking i'm thinking they're never going to get there and they want to we have right. all been there we're like oh my gosh if i won the lottery this will happen mm -hmm. this is the lottery except there's no gambling to it the only right. gamble no gamble. Is saying am i going to try this right that's it am i worth it that's what it is it's not even a gamble it's Am I worth enough to invest in my success? Am I worth enough to invest in some value where I can provide generational wealth, legacy for my children's children's children? I think about people like David Green and Hobby Lobby or Jeff Bezos. They great, 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 great grandkids don't have to worry about anything, right? And so we can now take part of that percentage and become the wealthy 3% one percent and now neither do our kids tiny baby tony don't have to ever worry about a legacy <laughs> no, because tony calls you're him tiny baby. baby i know right <laughs> so you think about all these families right all the families we talk about right all yeah. the legacy where did they start most all of them yeah, started with somewhere. someone coming from a different country coming here with yeah. not a dime yeah. And, right. they took that, and all they took was pure hustle to change their family legacy. And maybe the people, Absolutely. Have to it, but they try and they talk to their kids about that legacy. And we don't, it has to start someplace. So like I said, what if I did this 10 years ago, where would I be? Well, I could take right. that same thing now, whoever, you know, if you're not doing this, if this is not happening, where would you be in 10 years? make a million dollars this year if you had the opportunity to do that where would you right. be because it's not just absolutely say that the possibilities are endless when there's eight trillion dollars what is eight times 365 that's how much trillion dollars is running through this market Ooh. a year and you're just asking for wow. a right and you so know that's what? it 
Tony. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. <laughs> the thing is, like, when I would say that, and I would say, you know, $7.3 trillion market, do you know my mind was still thinking annual? Although yeah. I'm looking at it and it said daily, daily. <laughs> my mind was still saying annual. And then one day, it was just like, <laughs> Ooh. I know. Right? Like, <laughs> right? Like, this is day. Right. This is like, day uh, per year, per day. And I'm like, oh my gosh. So, that little thousand dollar a day goal that I had for, you know, making a thousand dollars a like day. It's like a piece of sand thing. on a beach. Oh my gosh. And then, wait, do you know I did that this morning? from a trade idea it wasn't even scalping that was a trade idea that we got and i put it in my little thing put a lot signs on it that my account could handle and before yes. we even went into the new york session this morning i had already not only did i meet that thousand dollar goal i exceeded it so here i am sitting wow. in class like i done made my money <laughs> you know i'm like what do i do you know what like you know, you I'm like that, that's that's a school that that you know did all their work, but mm -hmm. class didn't, and so you just sitting there like, okay, well, I guess I'm a. Uh... Because I mean, I really, a thousand dollars a day, twenty days out of the month, twenty trades, that's twenty thousand dollars. That's twenty. That's two hundred and forty thousand dollars. That's a quarter of a million dollars a year. Where else? That's straight facts. Where? Where is that? Nowhere. Happening? No. And, Nowhere. and, and I still, it blows my mind when I'm thinking, why aren't people doing this? Why are they not doing this and learning this skill? Because it is. Right. You're learning. You have to learn. But for real, if I told you guys that you got to learn something, I promise you that if you learn something, it may take you a year to do it, but you're going to be making millions of dollars. Would you right? Know? But listen, this is this is how I like to put it. And then I want to get into the video because I know we have oh Jacob God. coming up, right? We have Jacob Jake coming, was up. coming up. But no, no. I, I thought tomorrow. It's, I thought it's two tomorrow, Wednesday. He's, he's not tomorrow on tonight. Okay. I mean, look, he's, I got it. I got tonight. He's rescheduled. I have it on my calendar, so it popped up, and I he was like, rescheduled Jacob. tomorrow. You know, tomorrow okay, he's yeah. a special speaker. Look. We got to be there. Okay. And I love you, Javian. Because <laughs> so we, you know, it's like, like education, okay? Because this is an educational Ooh. platform. So everybody right. is like, you know, oh, education, education. You need your education, education, education. Okay, great. Like, fine, fine, right? Come get your education, then. So come get your education because right. where you would need a look, forget bachelor's degree. You need a master's degree nowadays. Right. Yeah. And, that's, and even that's, that's only and that's, be, that's still that's what fifty, maybe fifty grand right? a year, maybe fifty grand. That's a year. only going to get you so far. So a master's degree takes six years. A PhD mm -hmm. that's eight years. So a master's maybe. degree or or a PhD <laughs> about let's just maybe. say from six to ten years. That right. There you go. You're gonna still have a cap on a salary for a and job. You that may you're be made. making six figures. Maybe you making, may right. making six figures. Maybe. You may or maybe. may not get that job position, whatever it is that you're going for, right? Okay. And you're taking out loans and everything in order to do mm -hmm. that. So can you give yourself a year? Because we have plenty of people. Tony is one. Sherry is yes. another, the scout queen, yes. she's another. So many people that have been over here for less than a year, but just made the commitment to themselves and have right. given so themselves Lauren. a million dollar pay raise yep. in less than a year. For $105. <laughs> For tuition a month. a month. The tuition, you can trade your entire yearly tuition in one day. Coach, you just did it this morning. <laughs> like, we can't make this stuff up, y'all. We can't make it up. Like, literally, you can trade your full extreme global academy tuition in one day. <laughs> and then look. And be paid for a whole year. Let's like, for
for the lottery players, okay, that go and spend money on the lottery. I put a $3 lot size, $3, and made $1,800 before nice. 8 o'clock in the morning. People were nice. still getting on a train or getting in their cars to go to work, haven't even clocked in yet. And here's the thing. Mm -hmm. Our trade ideas are at like 95 plus percent. Huh. So that yes. was an accuracy rate. Yes. Accuracy rate. So, I mean, and sometimes it's 100. Like at this point in the week, it may even be that way because it's usually 100 till the end of the week. And we maybe have one of yeah. like 50 or 60 or two of 50 or 60. But that's the thing. It's not even gambling. And it's if you do want to call it gambling, it's like a 95 percent. Accuracy. Well, right. Ninety-five percent. Like, that's not, the lottery doesn't do There's that. No way to lose. It's, it's like one, the don't lottery is like one in some millions, billions, or something. And people don't realize that the the biggest thing that we talk about, and you guys talk about, and what we talk about. I'm doing the the nine o'clock tonight, but the reason we talk about this Whoop, is because really? it's. I mean, that. yes, I'm going to be a millionaire, but I mean, good lord. When you're making, let's just say you make five thousand dollars a month trading, right? And maybe you did three or four, and it's yeah. a few hundred dollars there or there. That is someone's entire income, so they don't have to worry about bills. Yes, I yes. mean financial freedom is not being able to go out and buy a forty thousand dollar watch and some huge mansion. Financial no. freedom is being able to sit on your porch. Do what you want with your kids. If I want to go on a trip, I go on a trip. If I want to do this, I do that. Financial freedom is being able to just have that money. Because I remember when I didn't, someone's like, oh, can I borrow 50 bucks? Can I borrow 50 bucks? Can I? Because I got to right. pay my light bill and I'm going to have to put my water bill off two weeks. You know how it is. Call yeah. the water company. Can I pay you three well, days? I was giving a PayPal. Because man, on it. it. <laughs> pay a little bit on it. <laughs> It was a job to, to juggle that. And now I'm in a place where I can just help anybody. And it's not like, it's not a horrible thing. And I can help my kids. My I just bought my son a Mustang. Yeah. Now, use Mustang, y'all. But the thing is, is it's just, it's an amazing feeling. And that's what I want people to have. It's the feeling to just breathe and not have to worry about your bills. And is your lights going to get cut off? Is your phone going to get cut off? Is your internet going to get cut off? Is right. evicted? You know, that feeling being taken away is is an amazing thing. That's all this, I want. It's all I want to ask. This is what financial freedom is. <laughs> Look at that. Right. Zero. Yes. Zero. I remember when you were getting turned off. <laughs> Oh, yeah. You know, when I first moved into here, my water got turned off because um, everything was on auto pay. <laughs> <laughs> right. and I, was like, I called. I said, there's something that's wrong with my water. That's a different set of problems. I called. Right. Like, there's something wrong with my water. I don't understand. Is, is the water out? Like, is there a, a leak? I didn't get a notice. And they're like, no, Miss Mark, you didn't pay your bill. I'm like, yes, I did. Like, why wouldn't I pay my bill? Because <laughs> right. of auto pay. I'm like, oh. <laughs> I was right. like, dang, you brought back some memories. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's a, it's a different set of problems now. <laughs> yeah. It's like, now you got to remember just to put it on auto pay. Just put it on auto pay. Exactly. <laughs> I love yes. it. Oh, my gosh. I love it. Okay. So let's get into this video. Look, oh, my God. We, usually we're like 30 minutes, but when we have a guest, we like know, to, we, to we, let the guest go. Like yeah and so, all of these comments i'm seeing now i just oh my gosh stephanie oh, and yeah. amber lee and jv yun you got a lot of love today tony people are excited oh, exactly. a lot of love but we well deserved love as many of the comments as i as as possible <laughs> that i saw okay so let's uh you can learn to trade and make frito pies in the coach's corner <laughs> <laughs> We got like, a t shirt. Oh, I got a Trey, that shirt. You and Frito Pie. Eat Frito Pies, Trey. I'm trying to tell you. We, we want everybody to eat. Okay. <laughs> so, we're gonna have to, you know what? You're going to have to bring me on once a week to cook something where y'all talk about trading. I told you to start doing them TikToks 
and you you put that Frito pie on there, and then that ramen. I gotta figure out how to. I gotta figure it out, y'all. I gotta figure it out. There's so many things I'm looking at. Another thinking, stream. Another thing I have to learn, but I'm gonna do it. I'm the first one made my kids were. I was like, listen, I can do this. No cap. No, not that. Oh my gosh. Uh, th this is the video. Yes, Tony. Right? What's wrong with is you? Is this the one? Can I, I, can can I, I, I listen? Okay, wait. Look. I, no. We, we're going to show. I said okay, this one. Is it? Y'all do it. Y'all do it. I'm going to sit back. No, no. I, wait. Okay, I, I show this is the one I sent, Tony. Which one do you want to share? This is the one I sent that I found that we no. watched before. Okay, no, I, I, I'll do whatever. Okay, I'm see, I'm Tony. Like, okay, wait a minute. Oh no! Yeah, but then she got. It says it's unavailable, Tony. It's private. Hold on. You have so to. here's what happened is um, I did I spoke that was my master's degree one that I spoke at, um, mm. and it was, y'all, it was at the Austin um, Frank Irwin Center. And that place is huge. Like it's just, and I was just sitting there, there's all these people, and I was just thinking, man, I was so nervous. And then of course, y'all know when you're talking, you know, y'all saw me drinking stuff over here. It's because it just happened so quickly. Um, hold on, let me change that. Mm -hmm. How do I I don't know how to change it? How to change make that. it public, the link public. Oh, that's what I'm gonna do. That's what I'm gonna I know, do. put it put it on unlisted. <laughs> public. Put it on public. Unlisted. Yeah. Yes. If you know you what it was and share it with me then i can you no, know it's public but the thing okay. was here's the hilarious thing i didn't it, it was never published it was never published oh <laughs> I don't oh think it was lord tony okay you know what? what what happens over there what happens? Not, <laughs> you know what here's what we're doing we're just trying to survive over here um i don't know what to say about that okay okay it should work out all right now and now i see it so now i'm about to share so here we go okay this so video y'all like, i told you we're like raw over here okay? my life it was so inspirational <laughs> is this that one that i made or the one of the commencement speech this one I don't, uh, this is the one you just sent which one is that one you gonna play okay, what you just sent you right fail. okay that this the one made. Okay, this is it. This is great. This is this one is the one. It's the fail fail for because yes. So hold on. How long is that going, Coach? Ten minutes? I can't see it. It's nine. Yeah, ten minutes. Um, okay, no. I mean, I don't care if it was an hour. I would watch it again. Okay. <laughs> so we want to make sure. Okay. All right. Here we go. I'm up. I'm about to press play. Oh my god. You got the sound on, Coach? Yep. Oh, my gosh. So embarrassing. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm so tiny and young. I can't even. You just said <laughs> our greatest glory is not in never falling, but in rising every time we fall. We are here today because we are honor students. We've worked hard, we've fallen, we've risen, and we've earned our spot in Phi Theta Kappa. We all know exactly what this quote means. Moreover, we've likely felt the harsh reality of failure. Or have we? Does the culture of competition in our society force us to deny that failure helps us grow? How many of you have placed the negative connotation on the word failure? Indeed, we're explicitly told failure is not an option. I've struggled with the word failure all of my life. As a student in high school, I was told I couldn't go to college because there was no money and I wasn't smart enough. And then, as a divorced parent, I felt I was failing at one of the most basic expectations there is, motherhood. When I was driven to higher education, it was because I had failed once again. I couldn't get a job to take care of my kids and I with just a high school diploma. People who know I'm Phi Theta Kappa think that I stopped failing once I reached college, and that's not true. 
I failed exams because I was too soft to go to school. I failed my family because I chose studying over birthdays and holidays. I failed my children. I failed my children because I chose to take them to daycare and their aunts and grandmothers so I could study. I chose school or invention thousands of miles away. We balance long work hours, bosses, professors, exams, studying, children, mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers, our cats and our dogs, and our friends, all at once. And as honor students, we're expected to do this without failing. Is this society's fault? Or is it our own? For not celebrating these failures as accomplishments and steps towards something bigger. I believe it's the latter. It is because of these failures I served my country for eight years. It is because of these failures that I stand here before you today. We must redefine society's perception of failure and embrace the words of Winston Churchill. Success is not final, failure is not fatal, and it is the courage to continue that counts. Thank you. You guys, that was the high of my highest high. It was amazing. I was part of an international honor society that had been in existence for over a hundred years, with only two executive directors in its history. I was one of literally a few hundred people that would ever, ever have this distinction. I got to do things I never thought I would do. I got to travel to places I never thought I would travel. But I got to impact students all over the country and tell them about the value of education and that if you worked hard enough, you could get to your dreams and attain them. There were scholarships and grants everywhere. You just had to work for them, because that's what I did. Up to this point, I had not paid a dime for my college. I had worked for every bit of my scholarships and my grants. I wrote essays. I earned them. I got to meet some amazing people. I won more awards than I can even count. And what was even crazier is that I was even on TV and magazine advertisements. I couldn't believe it. And then what came next was amazing. I got offers from all over the world. It was unbelievable. But then the low is slow. Something happened too many years early for the Me Too movement, but it rocked me to my core and I said something because I didn't want what I went through anyone else to go through. It caused a major, major upheaval. And I never imagined the people that loved me so much and stood by my side would completely abandon me. My world grew black and dark, and I felt like there was just nothing left. I'd worked so hard, and it was yanked away. And I just felt like all I was trying to do was good. Why was this happening? Why was it happening to me? And it took me a while to figure out that it wasn't happening to me. It was just another obstacle. And hadn't I given that speech about getting back up? I had to get back up. I had to do these things. Because if I didn't, what would my kids think of me? What would my family think of me? And I just gave up. I had to decide. I had to make a choice. By this point, everything was gone. All the scholarship offers, everything I worked for. I was erased from the history of this honor society. It's like I never existed. And I decided that I just was not going to take it anymore. I was in control of my destiny. I was the only one that could stop me. And I was going to do it because everyone said I couldn't. Everyone, the hate, the comments on social media, on major news articles, the things that were being said about me, it hurt me more than anything's ever hurt me in my life. And I just decided it was enough. It didn't matter. I was done. I was done listening 
So I decided there was only one thing to do. Just keep moving. Stand back up and keep going. And I just told myself that every day. Stand up. Get out of bed. Quit throwing your pity party and move on. Get on with your life because you have so much left to give. And I just decided that I would do the one thing that I thought I would ever do. And I really did it, you guys. I applied at many colleges, but Northeastern is who accepted me. I was super excited, but it meant that I had to invest in myself and my dreams. I leveraged myself to the help of student loans, but it was worth it. I met amazing people, I had amazing experiences, and I learned so much. And then I found out shortly before graduation that of all these people here, you won't see me there. I was the only student that received a 4.0, and I was actually on the stage as valedictorian. It blew me away, and it taught me a very valuable lesson. That no matter what, if you keep getting back up and knocking down the brick walls and getting back up and asking where the next brick wall, you could never really fail. You're going to see failure, you're going to feel failure, but if you get back up, that success is so much sweeter. And I couldn't have gotten to this point. I couldn't have celebrated all of this without those failures and appreciated them. But I wasn't done yet. I set my sights on a master's degree because they said I couldn't do it. So of course I did it. My family was there and I was so excited. But the best part was I was chosen to be a And that's what I wanted was to share my story. Because what I really want is to impact others and let them know that success doesn't come with a lot of failure and a lot of dark times. It was amazing. Another great ride. But I had always lived by these words by S.A. Lauder that really touched me when I heard them. And I started to really, really feel it in my soul. I never dreamed about success. I worked for it. I just did it. And that's what I hope people get from this. Things happen, and they're amazing, and then more things happen, and they're bad. But it's not the end. It's only another chapter in your story. You write it. Your life is a book with so many different chapters. And if you don't like the one you're in, just end it and start a new one. Y'all, I can't watch myself like that. Oh, my gosh. Hello, hello, hello to all of my wonderful It's <laughs> just too much. Hey, you got That's how Tony started. Hello, hello, hello. Hey, you hello, guys. You guys. <laughs> look, look, this weekend, this weekend, they played the song, right? The Morning Motivation song. And why did I find myself saying, like, after it was done, you know, the song on Morning Motivation and Carrie Hilton and everything. And when it goes off, I was just like, hello, 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 you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I cannot hear that song and come to the end. Without Tony's and not voice. Yeah. Hear Tony's voice. <laughs> <laughs> it's so, it's so normal now. Like, we hear a Rise Champion. And, then, and I'm like singing it like I wrote it. I'm like, see, but I'm like, Michelle, sit down. Like, we can't both count. Like, you gotta really power down right now because it's just so empowerful. Like, and then we have conditioned ourselves through you to get our day started, get our mind right. We are champions, and and you know, from art to um a rise champions to uh this is how legends are made. And I'm like I I'm walk Tony. around like those are my anthems right now. I'm like, like that's Tony. Tony put that, and now you know you got that crazy, crazy TikTok video, and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> dance. I'm like, we gotta get our steps together for Indy. Like, <laughs> we got to. We, got to. we gotta get our choreography ready. So, Coach Tony, me. Who else is gonna join? We gotta get our steps together. Like we can't be half doing this video, right? We gotta, we gotta practice. <laughs> right. Oh my god. Okay. So that was uh, 
Oh, guys, look, I want to say thank you so much, Tony, for being with us on the Coach's Corner today. It was awesome. Look, I know we need to get back to our income producing activities. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, Kitty. Hey, Kitty. Hey. How you doing? <laughs> Look, I saw him at the window right there. He's like, what's going on? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. like, what's happening? Love oh, you yes. guys at nine o'clock Eastern, 9 p.m. Eastern. 45 Tony. Coach T, who you just heard, will be doing the Extreme F Opportunity Call. You do not want to miss this presentation. Let me tell y'all, she's like a sniper. So if you late, you don't miss it. Because she get in, she all for like 15, 20 minutes. Look, she's in and out. We, so you we do kept want to miss long Coach T. on the coach's corner. But when I tell you, when she does this opportunity right. call, listen, it starts at 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Central. Which means Central. that you need to look, be on a Zoom, log in, whatever it is you need to do at at, at 7 55, 8 55 <laughs> Eastern, because Tony yes. is going to start and she's gonna be dumb and she's gonna give you everything. She's not leaving the whole nothing. thing. She's gonna give you a you're gonna get a whole world everything, and it's gonna be 15 minutes. <laughs> if you log in. <laughs> If, if you log in late, late it's, it's gonna be done. After eight twenty, you missed it. It's over. It's over. She's it's talking over. about. Look, I got it's on over. one time. I was like, I was like, oh, let me join the opportunity call, right? Because I would call myself, gonna record you, Tony. I signed on. You was like, it was like, it was like, it was like nine seventeen. So please get back. The person who invited you to this call. I was like, it's nine seventeen. No, look, I got on. I got on at eight seventeen, nine seventeen, one time, and it was like this meeting is it. You know how like when you it's like waiting, look, waiting for a host to start meeting. I'm like start meeting. Oh no, this is old. Tony, I said done. Tony must have did it today. Dang, the sniper, the sniper came in there, gave y'all the information, ran that thing down, and she was like, "All right, bye." Look, she but I you, love that. that. And everything. So be it on, is, I love it. be on time. So we're about to let Coach Tony go so that she can, you know, yes. do what she needs to do, get her voice together, you know, kiss her husband, all that kind of stuff. Because he just came in, all that great jazz, right? You know, hey, we we about family over here, so we gotta, Absolutely. you know, gotta get to her. <laughs> Does she spend time with her husband before they get on the call? Right. Po Kenny, is Kenny eating burrito pies? Is he eating burrito pies? <laughs> Y'all, he loves Frito Pies. He oh, was probably funny. like, he probably came in and be like, the kitchen is off. <laughs> I'm like, I was busy. Figure it out. Right. <laughs> Somebody can do it. Okay. There's Fritos in there. But Tony, Coach T, I want to say on behalf of myself, Coach Adasa, the Coach's Corner, and all of you who watch via YouTube or via Facebook Live, we thank you for spending time with us here on the Coach's Corner. We have you back anytime you want to come join us. We have so much fun. You are our sister, <laughs> brown, black, green, yellow, blue, white. Who cares? You are family. We love you. We love the spirit, the energy, the story, the message that you share with us. And we just want to let you guys know, all who watched Tony today on the Coach's Corner, that you can have this lifestyle too. This is not made up. Tony is an average person, as you guys heard. Yeah. Coach Adasa, myself, we're average people. And it's, a, it's so many average people who have made a decision to join this opportunity and provide generational wealth for their family. So I'm just so grateful today, Coach T. You know, I love you. You know, you, you already know. I'm not even going to go into that spiel because you know you help me on a daily. So I'm just going to leave it right there. But I love you so much. I enjoyed this platform, sharing it with Coach Adasa. And it's just great. It's just great. So thank, thank you for sharing you so your time with us. Thank you so much for letting me come and say hey and take up like so much time. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> been, like four opportunity calls. But thank you all very much. I very much appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You are welcome. Coach Adasa, would you like to say something that closes out for the Coach's Corner tonight? Yes. Again, thank you so much, Tony, for doing this. Thank you so much. And your story is just really, really inspiring. And so that's why we wanted to share you with everybody. 
because Tony's yeah. just awesome. Period. Point blank. The end. <laughs> right. So yeah. again, we thank you for coming for uh, being here with us on the Coach's Corner. Again, we are here now on Tuesdays, just Tuesdays only, <laughs> right? At 7 p.m. Mm-hmm. Eastern Standard Time, 6 p.m. Central, where we help you get to your next level. So we'll see you guys next week. But listen, get on that opportunity call tonight. Be on time. Coach Tony, she's bringing, look, she's giving you all the sauce, so make sure you're on, all right? And bring a friend. Or two. Bring a friend. Or or ten. Bring them in. Friends, (laughs) colleagues, whatever. Doesn't matter. Just bring them on because we're only going to give them everything that they need to know in split seconds. (laughs) All right? So you guys take care. Have a wonderful, wonderful evening. Peace. Thank you.